I, I, yeah, there we go. So I think now we should be recording. So moving on with that, uh, welcome to the first Tuesday after work of the series that we're organizing in, uh, in 2021. Started last year during the during the pandemic, we figured it would be good to have a couple more online sessions uh, and try to get some networking going uh, in an environment where we're still working from home. Hopefully in the future, the, the format can evolve and we can do things in person in different locations and so on. But for now, the Tuesday after work series is, uh, is planned to take place online and uh, carry out uh, during the, the following Tuesdays. Every Tuesday at seven, uh, we'll meet online to have an interesting speaker, play some games, drink some beers, um, and spend some time together in general. So as you can see here, we have now uh, five uh, Tuesdays booked with uh, different items on the agenda. You can go to the website um, and check out the list of what is planned. But I think a general call to action here might be good that if you have a topic that you would like to talk about, if you are interested in, in giving a presentation, then we do have some space throughout these days and we would happily also extend the series longer um, if there are more speakers or people that are interested to, to contribute. So if you would like to contribute with a session or a workshop or something interesting to share with the community, um, a topic, a conversation starter, these sorts of things, feel free to let us know, drop us an email on, uh, on alumni at eatdigital.eu or reach out to, to Davor uh, and he will be very happy to, to set this up with you. But yeah, so, so that's a bit the plan that, uh, that we have. The format for these sessions will, will every week be a little bit different, um, but in general, they will follow the format where we meet, we talk a little bit, we have a beer, uh, we have an interesting speaker or multiple speakers that are going to set the stage a little bit. Uh, we can ask some questions, have a bit of interaction, and then we can end the session with some more networking, sticking around in the call as long as uh, as long as people see fit. I heard from uh, from Bobo that there is a Chelsea game happening tonight, so he might not stick around for the, for the full night to, to drink beers, but it's uh, it's really up to you. Uh, how you want to uh, how you want to shape all of this. So without further uh, ado, I think it is time to, to introduce you our speaker uh, for tonight. And for those of you that have checked the website and saw that there were two speakers, uh, we actually have some some sad news because Corey, uh, one of our speakers, informed us this morning that due to personal reasons, he couldn't make it today. Um, and of course, this was a very short notice for us to, to find an equivalent. Thankfully, um, to, find, to find an alternative someone else. But thankfully, we have, uh, we have an excellent speaker with us uh, today, uh, Josip, who is going to talk about five lessons to know as a, as a team lead um, and hopefully inspire us to, to be better leaders uh, in our teams. So with that, uh, Josip, uh, I think I'm going to stop sharing the screen and, and you can take over whenever you're ready. Um, can you enable me the, uh, okay. Yeah, I just did, sorry for that. <laughs> I realized that you can't share the screen. <laughs> Good, there we go. Um, do you see my screen? <clears throat> yes, we can. Yes. Uh, we see the presentation mode now. Uh, how to do it, uh, view. Okay, whatever. I can just like uh, present it like this. I think it's still fine. So, hello everyone. My name is Josip, and uh, yeah, like a uh, bit over a year, I started like uh, a new role in my career, which was uh, like a uh, tech lead or a team lead. And yeah, I just wanted to share some of the lessons, some of the tricks, and uh, just explain you how this uh, role looks like and how it feels like, and yeah, how you can uh, build trust with some of the people that you work with, and uh, as well as like how to motivate it, how to keep things organized, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So I will share a bit of a background. So like the company where I work, it's called Digital Factory. It's, it's, a, it's a subsidiary uh, from a very big uh, multinational bank. And uh, we are just, let's say, like a small department there. And uh, But there were like some big plans involved. However, actually in the next, in the last few weeks, uh, we got some... Uh, 
uh, let's say, surprising news that they're going to close the company. Actually, they're going to close this company because uh, different reasons, a uh, bit of Corona, but a bit, bit of also administ administrative stuff like uh, the company is actually located in other country where I am. And for them, just somehow like it made sense to, to, to move everything to the, to the capital where they're located. So yeah, I actually received an invitation from Davor and then this happened and I was like, oh, fuck. Like, should I like do the presentation or what I'm gonna do right now? But anyway, I just said like, yeah, I think the learnings are still there, and uh, yeah, like I think I could share with the team. And for me, it's actually nothing negative, and uh, I really kind of like don't mind. For me, it's like also like some new chapter uh, after this. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to like give you a heads up so you know like uh, where the story is coming from. So yeah, like some of the topics that I want to talk today is like uh, trust. What does it mean? Like in, in a company setting, like one-on-one -on -one meetings, what they are, what is what are they supposed to do? Then some uh, discussion about like problem solving. Uh, like uh, there are like quite interesting stories there. So uh, I'm looking forward to share it with you. And in the end, it's just like a delegation, how you can like deal with it and how you can, uh, how you can understand its powers and really enjoy the role of the of some like manager or a lead basically. So like some of the things that they don't tell you when you start this role is kind of like different than many of your skills don't uh, translate and uh, it can be quite problematic if you have this uh, Superman complex and this is uh, kind of like that you want to fix everything at the same time like when you see it. But uh, actually, this is uh, not really uh, what you should be doing as a manager. And uh, yeah, for me, this was uh, quite interesting. But uh, somehow, like the team really didn't doesn't like when you solve their problems. And uh, if you if you actually just leave the team to come up with their own solution, they have more buy in. They're like more motivated. They're more like willing to learn and so on. And uh, but what you need to do as a manager, you just need to like present the problem. You really need to understand the problem and summarize it in a nice way for, for the whole team so they can work together and solve it basically. And when they work together, like a group is a much uh, like larger entity than a single human and the solutions there are, are actually most often like superior than just individual solution. So yeah, this is kind of like a very interesting uh, learning. And I think it's like a really nice tip that you can uh, use. Um, uh, but even like the foundation for all of these situation is something called like uh, trust. And there is like this nice book, which talks about like, not what the great teams are, but like what really, what really means to be like a, a bad team, like what are some dysfunctions in a bad teams. And it's like a pyramid and in the bottom, the most important part is the uh, absence of trust. So there's no trust. Some other, um, some other items are fear of con conflict, lack of commitment, avoidance of ac accountability, and then an attention to results. So I'm not really gonna talk that much into details about this one because this is like the most uh, important one and everything else like uh, flows outside of it. And for me also like here, actually the key to get the trust of the people is you need to kind of like say your weaknesses. You need to admit that you have weaknesses and you need to kind of like be open about it. And so like the team members really need to be vulnerable uh, with uh, one another. And uh, once when you have this, like uh, uh, it, it really creates a situation where like team trust each other. And on the other hand, if you're just like, I don't know, like the smartest, you know, all the answers and so on, it, it really doesn't look good towards the rest of the rest of the team. And uh, in the end, like it's quite important to really uh, like state your weaknesses as well. And uh, of course you need to be like there with the people, spend a lot of time with them and really get into some like uh, personal connection. So like uh, the easiest way to get a personal connection with the people is just to do like one-on-one -on -one meetings and uh, really here, you don't really have to be like super formal. You can just keep it like uh, at least half of the meeting as like a casual, just like to talk with them, like even non-work stuff, just to get kind of like some uh, relationship uh, with the person. 
And uh, yeah, like this relationship again goes along with this trust. So it's kind of like you're building trust uh, by this uh, sort of actions. And uh, yeah, like in the beginning, I actually had 12 people and uh, this was super difficult. Like with so many people, like this one-on-one -on -one meetings, it can really eat your time. Like, uh, so I actually had to structure it a bit. I just uh, selected like part of the team to have like one-on-one -on -one meetings. But in the end, uh, like this other part of the team, like kind of complained, they would also like to have it. But uh, in the end, it was just really too much. I really find the natural limit for like a team where you want to have like a super close relationship is maybe maximum like six people or so and in our case we had like a big team and we split it in two so like when we did that like things uh, functioned uh, like quite uh, quite better and uh, yeah what else so like um, again this is related to the superman complex uh, like in this role actually you don't really need to solve uh, that much stuff. And uh, actually, this is not what you should be looking for, right? So normally, if you're not managing, you're just kind of looking for some work to do, like uh, do, some, do something useful. But in a manager role, I think you need to look for this leverage uh, uh, situations. And what this means is you're looking for some situations where you can like just connect the people it will take you like five minutes, but I don't know, like it will really unblock like half a day for them just like for researching something. And uh, I think if you focus on this kind of situations, you really start noticing them quite a lot. And uh, yeah, this is basically your multiplier as a manager. It's very low effort stuff, but very, very big impact because you're kind of like managing the team, you, you, you have a better overview of what is happening and you're probably aware of something they are not so. And uh, yeah, like this also goes like uh, with uh, like with uh, telling the people what to do. Like this is kind of like I have here in the notes. Like uh, interesting thing that people is like people are not deterministic. And uh, like if, if if you tell to the computer do something, if you program it, will do it. But like if you really tell to the human, it will probably not work. So you need like to tell it like two three times, and you always need to kind of check if it's uh, if it's finished and uh, yeah like uh, and all this needs to happen basically in a, in a nice way you also need to follow up whatever you tell them you kind of need to keep the word and then kind of like stay humble right this is I think also like a quality that uh, you just want to have this culture because it's uh, somehow like really nice to work uh, in that environment and um and uh, yeah, like uh, you really need to like sometimes you really hear like a bad ideas, like some stupid ideas, like some stupid suggestions and so on. And uh, and but you really need to address each of these uh, suggestions in, in a nice way. You really need to kind of unpack it, see why is it not good and kind of politely disagree with the person. But uh, and uh, yeah, this is kind of like uh, important. And um, yeah, it just kind of keeps the nice vibe around. And um, yeah, so like the last topic in the conversation is like delegation, topic, topic of delegation. So, and this kind of means there's really no deep focus time as a tech lead. Like you really don't have like, I don't know, like a full day free just to work on some stuff that you want. and. Even if you have this time, it probably means like uh, you're not doing something properly. And in this case, this would come basically to delegation. And uh, yeah, you really need delegation because you really have constant meetings, you're doing interviews, you're doing like one-on-ones and uh, yeah, but that's all fine. And uh, if you're really stuck on a program for many hours, this is kind of a sign that you need to include the team and then let them solve it or kind of participate and solve it with them. And yeah, I think this is kind of like for the end, if you really understand delegation and if you're fine with it. And I think delegation can only happen if you did all these steps before. So you really need to build trust. You need to kind of like have everything nice. And then you can really have a great delegation, really. You don't have to like check the people so much. And uh, 
when you just tell them to do something they're going to do and always like the quality is quite good and uh, I think if you reach this point that's kind of like the most enjoyable part of the job because uh, yeah you're just kind of like uh, seeing everything and you have also like a bigger impact right than you would have just like as a single individual your reach is quite higher and you can do some stuff uh, in an organization that will have like a higher impact so yeah i think that's kind of uh, like the conclusion of the presentation i hope it was uh, interesting for you and uh, if you have any questions just uh, feel free to shoot them thank you very much uh Josip, for uh sharing some of your thoughts your experiences uh, how it is to be uh, to be a team leader i think some of us uh, share the experience uh, with you of not having any time being in meetings and so on but uh, yeah i hope as well that based on this we can have a, a nice discussion all together i see there's a couple of questions for you Josip, that i think we can we can start with uh, and maybe have a bit of a discussion within the audience uh, within all of us uh, as well so that we can uh, we can see how we can all get better at, uh, at what we do um, so okay. I think the, f the first question in the chat is from Bobo. Bobo, maybe you want to unmute yourself and, and just ask it. I think that's nicer than... Uh... Yeah, actually, I've got two questions for you, Mr. Joseph. Thanks for that, you know, nice pre brief presentation. I can relate with a lot of what you're saying. Um, I'll just take it to myself. How were, how were you able to manage the whole... How, how, how did you manage to keep your team motivated during the pandemic period, during the crisis? Yeah. You know? Yeah, so I think you cannot motivate people. I really think uh, that doesn't exist. I really think you need to find what the people want and you need to kind of uh, know what is the company goal and what is the person's goal and you need to kind of bring it close. But yeah. uh, this is this is like uh, super important to, um, to do. Like you really need to know them. You really need to know the persons. This is like why you need to have like this one on one. So you really need to know like what motivates them and like uh, and what they want, right? Some people, I don't know, like want promotion. Some people want like, I don't know, like different stuff. Like you just get it when you meet the people and you really need to understand what this stuff is. And then you align the goal of the company with what they want. And I think this is kind of like the, the easiest uh, way, I think. All right. Then secondly, um, as a team lead, most of the time you're always surrounded by experts, obviously, and, you know, you're the one that coordinates the affairs. Of course, you need to know what the different experts are doing. Would you agree with me that your soft skills are more important than your, you know, your technical skills in that mm -hmm. sense? Mm -hmm. Because also most project leads, um, are seen as a T-shaped individual, right? Yeah. So, you know, you're sitting, you, you, you have this technical expertise, but then again, on, on the vertical side, you know, you, you have to just be natural with dealing with, <laughs> with different activities and tasks with, with, with yeah. your teammates. Um, yeah. I think it's a good question. So yeah. like, um, you're basically seeing like, just being like more techy or more social what what kind of like uh, can give you like a better edge so to say like uh, in 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 this kind of world so i really don't think it makes a difference it's really like uh, individual you you can be like whatever combination out there and you can still do it like do it right. like really really successfully like you can just be like super technical, like a bit like, I don't know, like not that social. And you can have on the other hand, like super social, not that technical and everything in between, I think it would work. So I have really seen it, uh, I've, I've seen all types and I think uh, you can do it. You just need to like add your, your personal flavor to it. And uh, in the end, like uh, I really don't buy this like expert thing. So like we really had like uh, some really, really big experts that we wanted to hire, but somehow they were like, not nice people right they were not fun to work with and uh i think like at this point uh, this is really what i'm looking at like you're just looking for some people that are nice and funny to work with right yeah, and, yeah, uh, and this is like what we optimize for if you just optimize for the technical skills like it it could be that it's not like the best decision that you could do and uh and like kind of like makes your day better, I guess, if you can just like joke around and work and uh, have like some nice uh, fun with the people there. 
Dan Christian, Mr. Joseph. I think, Paul, you have the next question. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Bobo, for, for the questions. There is indeed, yeah, I think uh, Paul, Paul is next on the, <laughs> on the list of questions. So several, maybe you want uh, to unmute yourself as well. Maybe start <laughs> with, uh, with one or two, and then uh, we can pick some others. Yes, I have several questions. So my first question is, um, uh, what kind of audience in general do you have when doing one-on-one -on -one meetings? Are it kind of techies? Is yeah. it also product people? And it's, and, uh, it's only techies. Okay, and then I have a um, uh, a follow-up question on it. Say that one of your um, techies is um, stuck on a task and he um, or she cannot solve it. Yeah, um, how are you gonna help this um, person out even if the team has maybe no capacity or no um, uh, experience in this topic? What will be the, the plan as a team lead? So how will you tackle yeah. this? Yeah, so I think like the the like uh, the biggest like the worst thing that can happen here is people are stuck and they're not telling you, and this is really the worst thing that can happen. And nobody knows they're stuck. They're just like I have to do it by myself. Like otherwise, I'm gonna be like another good uh, tech guy or not a good programmer. I really need to do it myself. And the thing is, like some things are very very difficult. And if you just keep it to yourself. First of all, like nobody knows that you're stuck and everyone else is expecting that you're going to deliver it on time. So like after some time you don't deliver anything, it's kind of like a very bad for everyone involved. And I really think like as, as on this position, you really need to kind of make it clear for everyone that it's also okay to do mistakes and not to know stuff, right? And, uh, and uh, that it's not really like a bad thing if they say, I don't know something, it's more bad thing if they like pretend that they know and like they just kind of like try to do it, but they kind of fail. And uh, yeah, this is like what I think is like the like the, the biggest danger here. And uh, and uh, but maybe like to be exactly specific to your answer, what if the teammate is stuck and team doesn't have resources? How do you help them out? So mm -hmm. here, I really like to jump in, right? Like I also like like to jump into the problem and uh, just like bounce ideas back and forth. And uh, usually this helps. And if it uh, if it doesn't help, in case of like some like trickier problem, I think you always need to like make the problem understandable and just open it to the group to solve it. This is like the best uh, uh, the best way to do these kind of things. In my opinion. How, how would you make um, uh, the problem understandable? For example, most big companies, they have like 100 people who are specialized in a certain field, right? So there are 100 people who can potentially fix your problem, mm -hmm. but they no, don't necessarily have the knowledge in the specific parts you are um, working on. So how then would you yeah, spread the knowledge and find the right person to help him? How would you yeah, help this teammate to narrow mm -hmm. down, yeah, this issue to a more global issue where you can solve it. Do you have mm -hmm. any ideas on that? This is especially with regards <laughs> to knowledge exchange, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think like, yeah, this is, uh, this is really like, uh, like a big question. I think uh, there's no short answer. It's really depends uh, as usual, <laughs> like uh, what are you trying to do? What are you trying to optimize? But uh, I like I think you are kind of asking question also like from from a more general sense like the knowledge sharing in uh, big companies and uh, this is a very very difficult uh, topic. Uh, you really need to take on an engineering aspect and engineering mindset. So like you want to eliminate communication between the people. So I think there's like a funny story when uh, for when uh, Amazon was scaling, I don't know, like when this was like in, in, in the 2000 years something, I don't know, like 20 years ago almost. So like they were really scaling as a company and uh, like they had like communication issues. Like it's a lot of people who's talking to what, who knows what, like, uh, and then they organized like a uh, company meeting and they wanted to solve this problem somehow. Like, and the conclusion for most of the people was that they should kind of meet more and discuss more and I don't know, just hang out more. But then this Jeff Bezos said like, no, this is exactly what we cannot 
no, like there's not going to be any human to human communication at all. Like this is how you get like uh, kind of falsy information out. And uh, what I mean by falsy is like when you have like people talking to the, another person, if it's something important, there's a quite a high chance that the other person is not going to say all of the information or some information that he says is going to be wrong. And what Jeff Bezos proposed a solution was to just kind of have like uh, uh, like a services, right? So if one department wants to provide some service to to another department, like they can just create their endpoint. They can they, they can create their API. They can auto generate the documentation from that API, and then. For the rest of the company, if they're using the, the same standard, they know how to read the documentation on the other side and they can consume the data. And also internally, if they have anything to provide to other departments, they're gonna do the same. So I think this is kind of like uh, how this problem could be solved, but they're very, very uh, like, they're like much more like uh, different perspectives, how you can look at it on. And I think in general, it's like quite complex just because, humans aren't made to, to work like in, in a big groups. And uh, yeah, like um, the more people you have, the more communication channels you have. And uh, this is like uh, sometimes a very big uh, mistake from like uh, inexperienced managers. If something is slow, like most of the people would just throw more people at the problem. And uh, if, if it has to be like much more people, like, I don't know, like ah, 10 more, 100 more, they're gonna do it. But in the end, once again, this is like really the thing that you should not do. You really need to remove people because when you have like large number of people, everyone is talking to each other and like you can even calculate how many like communication channels are between the people and really it's growing exponentially. So yeah, I don't know, I, did, it, did I answer your question? I think it is a good answer, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah very very interesting the indeed next, this uh, this examples uh, that you're bringing um I, I also saw in between that uh, eric raised his hand uh, before so do you also want to chip in with a question uh, yeah i mostly had it but i kind of forgot about it so just go on and it. It just, <laughs> i mostly have a lot of kind of also my own experience on on this as well but yeah i'm gonna maybe ask one thing uh, here we are speaking a lot about uh, team lead, but uh, at least from my point of view, my company, we have it split in kind of two positions, which is manager and tech lead. Because uh, here's the main question, like, uh, yeah, you're managing tech and product. Uh, what is harder, managing tech or managing product, at least from your personal point of view? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you mean tech or people? Uh, like tech and product tech for people, me? Tech or people, tech not product, people. tech or people. Okay. Um, so if it's easier to manage tech or product, I really think it depends on the problem, um, like depends on the problem and also depends on the people you have, like, uh, sorry, I, I said it wrong. I didn't really mean <laughs> tech or people. I meant more like tech side, like, okay, we have to implement stuff like this way and organize resources and everything, or more like people side. So politics, like deal with other teams, deal with other <laughs> bosses, deal with uh, prioritization and uh, other companies or clients mm -hmm. or everything. So kind of these mm -hmm. two things. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I would actually look at, look at it from the perspective of like uh, having an impact. I really think uh, uh, on this kind of positions, no matter if it's like a team lead or like a tech lead. And uh, this is not really clear in the industry, like whatever you say, it's true here, like that this is one role, that it's also two roles and so on. So it all depends like how you see it, how the organization sees it and like how the individual in this position sees it. Because you can, if you have like preference towards one role, you can just say like, I think it should be like this role and uh, the rest of the company, I think uh, most of the time understands it. And uh, yeah, like the way how I would look at this uh, situation basically to your question is like, depending what your own goals are, right? If you just want to like, uh, work for the sake of working to get like some money like to to like uh, have enough to pay the bills i think like it doesn't matter but on the other hand if you're really passionate about something and if you want to make uh, something meaningful you need to look 
where would you have a better impact or like a bigger impact? And this is also similar to what Bobo was asking. Like, it doesn't really matter if you're like purely tech or purely, I don't know, social. If you have a big impact in the company, that's super valuable. If you can motivate people in some way or if you can present the idea and so on, this is like still like very, very valuable. And yeah, this is how I see it in my personal view. I, I think actually like... Uh, a mix of both, I think it's like uh, very good um, because you really want to have like this manager lead, like be able to reason with the people, like have like technical discussions and so on. Um, I think it's just like, uh, like less people means like think you do things easier. And also like just by having this as a one role, like will make things like much easier. And uh, like, you're gonna, ha- you're gonna be able to have a better relationship with the, with the rest of the team because you're like speaking their language you're like uh, doing what they're doing and so on and on top of it you're also doing like this one months and like the performance feedbacks and so on and uh, yeah overall I think uh, I have like a slight preference uh, to this and uh, and yeah like you can also have the most impact into this uh, into this uh, setup but uh, all other combinations are also like possible and also I think depends on the many different factors actually nice Thank interesting you so much. <laughs> <laughs> interesting interesting discussion that's starting here i think for, <laughs> like, sort of the, the tech side versus the the project the product management side it's uh, it's very interesting let let's see as well uh, there are some more questions in the chat um, so maybe it's good to give the floor to jao and uh, ask something <laughs> Thank you for asking. Uh, so I can, I can, I wrote in last, uh, but thank you for asking me. Uh, uh, thank you, Yossi, for your sharing. And I think it's, uh, I'd be happy to see you again online though this time. Uh, last time I remember it was in Madrid for the last year in local refs gathering. Good to see you again. Uh, so yeah, and also relating to what Eric said. Uh, so now, because in, um, maybe in the corporate we have like product owner uh, in charge of more like product requirements, those business related aspects. And also maybe have technical lead more uh, thinking about from uh, technical implementation. Uh, so I'm more interested in uh, if you, uh, uh, how do you act as an interface with other teams? Uh, maybe you can talk about something like from both people and also technical aspects. Mm-hmm. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. So nice to meet you. Uh, nice to see you too, uh, Xiao. And uh, yeah, like uh, to answer your question, um, like uh, depends. Like in our case, uh, we had different teams, but they were working on different products. So at some point, there was not that much overlap, but still, uh, it was good to to keep uh, the keep the connection. And the way how I was doing it was also like uh, one on ones. Uh, not with everyone from the other team, just so like with the team lead and maybe with some other persons that I, with who I maintained like, like a nice relationship. And uh, even though I was not, let's say their team lead anymore, we just kind of had like one-on-ones and uh, um, yeah, like just kind of like to keep uh, things going. And um, yeah, in a different setting, like when the whole organization and all different teams are working together, um, I, again, I think this is like uh, a really, you can write like a book about it. It's uh, it's still unsolved problem. And uh, I don't think there's like an optimal way uh, to do it. Kind of every way you do it, it's quite similar. And uh, there's no way like that is 10 times better than some other way. And uh, yeah, like also like, as I said before, like the amount of people, like it's, I think it's for, for some complex projects, like if you just start adding people, like it will just start uh, making the whole process of development, like really, really slow because you have so many people to synchronize. And, um, and uh, yeah, like uh, I think the other question was about the relationship uh, between the product owner as well and the team lead or am I correct? Yeah, like the in- yeah, uh, kind of like that, like interplay among product owner, and then maybe technical lead, even scrum master, et cetera. How do you balance yeah. yourself? Yeah, this is actually a very good question. So like um, uh, you can actually have like this power games between this kind of roles. And uh, 
and um, you really need to find like a balance there correctly. And uh, for me, like I really see this roles as equivalent, like product owner and uh, and uh, scrum master, product owner even more. And uh, you need to be in a good relationship with them. And I think in my case, actually this EIT, I think the business part uh, helped a bit. So to understand this language and uh, it's quite interesting to see like this, uh, uh, like this uh, business canvas, like this thing that we used like so many times, like I see it also like nonstop, like in the company. So that was quite good. And I think due to this uh, fact, we were able to speak uh, common language. And uh, you need to you need to understand what is possible and what is not possible, like uh, because uh, you need to you need to like you need to know how to say no because like the business people like oh like let's just do this but like they think like it's just kind of like a small thing but maybe you don't really even have an architecture for this uh, feature or they're telling you in the last moment like one thing that changes everything which is like very very bad like when you're architecting the system and uh, so you need to know like uh, you need to teach them what is possible what is not possible because most of the time product, product owners are not technical and uh, and I think it also depends if you know, like, what is the answer to the problem? Like, if you know, what are you building? Like, uh, if you're really sure, what are you building? Like, what is the best solution of the product that you could build? And, uh, like, you need to, like, really ask yourself, do you really know the answer to the problem that you're trying to solve? And if you're solving, like, some very difficult uh, problems, uh, you really don't know this. And I think the way you designed the system, which we did internally, was you're really trying to optimize the speed of iterations of the product. And uh, this is kind of like the main feature of the product is a system where, where you're able to add new features very quickly and you're able to uh, like uh, iterate quite fast and like... Uh, and do all sorts of testing and so on. And uh, yeah, I think if you share this uh, kind of like thought to the product owner, uh, they usually understand it. And uh, and they can also come with uh, some interesting solutions. So you need to always uh, involve them uh, with the rest of the team that there's like some interchange uh, between them and the team. But like, if you're doing like Agile and Scrum every day, you like meeting. So there is like a lot of chatter going around. And so this thing is kind of covered. Yeah, good point here. So I guess it's an important ability to say no and also prioritize what feature to deliver and enable and also be able to convince the business people to, under, to believe, okay, why we need to deliver those more important features first. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, if I may ask another maybe short question, can you maybe share some anecdotes as your team's lead, how you succeeded as, as the lead or even how you failed and what you learned about from, the, from those experiences? Yeah, so how I succeeded, um, I don't know if I succeeded, actually. I hope that I am. I mean, some people in the team say it. Uh, but I don't know. I tell them, like, whatever, I don't care. Like, like you just stuck with me and you better, like, listen to me. So <laughs> I'm your manager. And, uh, yeah, like, I mean, it's a joke, but we really have, like, this... Uh, kind of like uh, environment and I mean like quite often joking about this stuff but sometimes you really need to give like an honest feedback to the person like this was like really bad what did you what you did and like uh, you can do better and this kind of stuff so this is also quite important to tell to the people and uh, for me the anecdotes uh, um, like they're not I don't know like I think there are many anecdotes but I'm not really position myself then I'm like their manager I'm more like positioning like I'm kind of like with them I'm really doing stuff right like I'm not like this person who's never coding or anything like I'm actually like if something is very, very difficult that they cannot solve it like I, I try to solve it or and be involved as much as possible and um, yeah like so we kind of usually joke about it and uh, I we're like when we are joking about something, it's not really like uh, 
uh, like, I don't know. I don't even what to, what to say. Like there are many anecdotes, but I think it's like a long story just to, yeah. just to, just to tell them. And the negative parts, I mean, they are negative parts. So like, uh, for me, it was this, um, like, I kind of thought 12 people is fine, but it's definitely a lot of people if you need to manage. And uh, it's really a lot. And uh, I personally, I don't know, like if I'm ready for like that many people, uh, maybe, yeah. But then like on the tech side, you really don't have that much time. So like uh, you really need to be, I think more like a, a social, super social person. Like the more people you manage, I think the more social you need to be because like you, there's no time for tech. And, uh, and um, yeah, like for me, I really thought 12 people is fine. And uh, I think some people in the team suffered because I didn't really give them that much attention, just like uh, it was not possible. And uh, I don't know, I think, I don't know if you call it as a failure, but uh, it was uh, it was a bit like um, unexpected uh, for me, so. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much for, uh, <laughs> for these nice answers. I think as we are getting close to, to the hour, let's, uh, let's wrap up with one more question from, uh, from Davor. Um, sorry for all of you in the chat that I ignored. I didn't give the floor. <laughs> but yes, we can have a you, more uh, informal discussion afterwards uh, and continue talking about this topic a bit more. Yeah, thank you. I, uh, I had a question about how do you feel in for uh, a team lead or manager position? And is it really the experience that matters or it's more about networking, climbing the ladder? But I want to rephrase a little bit because I want to add meat to the bones. So and I realized that the company you were working for is CGEF and then the Digital Factory is basically an independent startup. So it's like a smaller team. And then there's a whole problem of nomenclature. For example, there's product owner, scrum master, project manager, product manager. I think in a smaller teams, some of these titles get fused together. So that's why I kind of mentioned, okay, how do you feel in the, for the development team lead, which kind of you act as a manager, but in some bigger companies, the manager has a completely different description of the work. But my question is, even in these smaller teams, how do you feel in for it? How, how was your journey from the beginning when you started working? How do you climb up to this position? Is there like a secret mm -hmm. sauce or it's more about networking? Um, so actually I didn't climb up. I didn't climb at all. So it's like a, a new company and uh, I joined like maybe half year after it was founded. And it was a subsidiary from a big company and they just wanted to like do a startup and like, it's kind of like a quite a, quite a general trend happening in, in the whole industry. And uh, yeah, they just kind of found me on LinkedIn and they were really doing uh, some, like they're doing like some keyword searches, I guess, like because they really had the tech, uh, what I used uh, uh, like in the last uh, five years and uh, for example, like both on the front end and the back end and on some data analysis and also uh, about um, computer vision because I did some projects with computer vision and they were kind of like doing uh, some project uh, in this area. And for me, it was like a really nice fit. And I was like, okay, like this sounds interesting. I could uh, as well uh, try it. But uh, if for like climbing up the ladder, I mean, uh, just change the ladder. This is, the, <laughs> I think the best advice here, like just change the company and like just start from, from there. This is like, like nothing beats this, like uh, just change the ladder if you wanna climb the ladder. And, uh, and um, yeah, yeah, that's kind of it. And uh, like, I think you also asked for like the difference between the manager in a regular company and like here in a startup. I mean, this is like really, um, this startup, I mean, on paper is a startup, but like, you need to understand this is like a multinational company behind it. So you really don't have like that much stress usually, like, you know, that they're running out of money and, and so on. And uh, so there's not this much pressure, but uh, it is a benefit, but it's not the only benefit. Uh, uh, there are some drawbacks to this. Like you really have people from the mothership and uh, like you always kind of listen to them. I think this is a pattern that I've seen like uh, uh, in a lot of places. And uh, so in a way you're, you're a startup and you're like a flat hierarchy, but they are like, you know, like uh, some different letters out there. <laughs> 
Thank you very much uh, for the question. And also, I think the, the inspiring advice to change the ladder if, <laughs> if you don't manage to climb it. I think it's a, it's a very good uh, <laughs> good way to conclude this, uh, this session. No, I really want to thank you uh, very much, uh, Josep, for the presentation and sharing some of your experiences. I think uh, at least I found it very interesting to hear some of <laughs> The, the approaches that you took to getting you know getting this problem solved and i think there's going to be many people that can that can use this in the future that can think about uh, you know how uh, how how you did this how others do it and hopefully we can all learn from each other and uh, and improve so that being said i think we have uh, reached the uh, the end of our official part um of the Tuesday after work. Um, I see that some people joined throughout the call that, uh, or throughout the session that may have hoped to uh, find a second speaker. Um, apologies because uh, our second speaker, uh, Corey had to cancel uh, last minute because of personal reasons. So um, we only had, uh, had your tip today, but I think you more than well uh, covered all the expectations of a, of a successful first uh, Tuesday after work in, in 2021. So with that being said, I'm going to stop the recording and we can have a little bit more uh, informal chat. <laughs>